we have a huge responsibility to ensure that the entire network of dot music domains, you know, could be as 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 compelling to visitors as possible. So if you if you go to a dot music and it has unrelated content, what does that got to do with music? It's it lowers the quality. So we want higher quality content and we don't want squatters or or people that are big into flipping domains to go in there and treat dot music as a domain investment. In other yeah. words, it, it's not for domainers, it's for the music community. <laughs> You're listening to Music Growth Talks, the podcast for musicpreneurs, with Andrew Apanov. Hello, everyone. I'm Andrew Apanov, and you're listening to Music Growth Talks. This is episode number 130, and my special guest today is Constantin Rousseau, the founder of Dot Music, the company that just got the rights to the dot music top level domain name after over 10 years of fighting for it alongside the likes of google and amazon uh, dot music uh, got it and uh, it's a big win not just for the company it's for the music community because this is what dot music represents uh, it's uh, now a community based domain name extension and it's supported by numerous uh, music organizations uh, across the world and uh, this episode is going to answer a lot of the questions many of you artists uh, will have about uh, registering the domain name. It's fairly unique because you cannot just go uh, on your domain name register and, and just get any name you want. Uh, you, you need to go through a, a verification process to uh, prove that you actually represent uh, the artist or music company name uh, that you are trying to uh, register the domain name for. So how exactly it will look like? Because it's not live just yet. You can pre-register uh, uh, right now, but uh, the domain name is going to become uh, available publicly approximately in 2020. So all of that is really interesting. I highly recommend you listening to the episodes in full to understand how it works and the uh, interesting and complicated background behind the domain. Constantine explains it all really well. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Constantine Rousseau from Dot Music. I almost said Dot Music, so Dot Music, not Dot. Here we go. Welcome to Music Growth Talks. Uh, I'm excited to have you over here and uh, I want to congratulate you on, on the big win. So yeah, welcome to Music Growth Talks. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. First of all, tell me if you don't, uh, if you don't mind starting with that, how many years you've been working on that project? About a dozen years. So it's been a long time. It's 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 crazy and uh, yeah, definitely impressive the kinds of persistence and dedication you've had. And um, some of our listeners might be familiar with the dot music top level domain name situation. Many don't have a single idea what's been happening with uh, all the bidding stuff, and uh, and and they just don't know uh, the scale of the project and the event that just happened. So mind sharing at just a background and overview of the yeah what's what's been happening with the dot music domain name why it hasn't been available just yet and uh, who's been trying to get hold of that top level domain name sure sure so the the background of not only dot music but all the other new top level domains concerned uh, the regulator ICANN trying to open up the internet for new extensions to compete with .com, .net, .org, and everything else. So before 2012, there was a lot of lobbying from a lot of people who believed that new extensions should be launched on the internet. So why should there be a .edu and a .gov and a .org and not a .music or a .movie or whatnot? So after years and years of lobbying and putting together the application guidelines called the application guidebook, in 2012, ICANN, the internet regulator that runs the domain space, launched a window 
in which any company could apply for any dot anything. Could be their company name, like dot Google, and it could be a generic keyword. Could be anything. So in 2012, there was a small window in which companies could apply for dot anything, and there were 1,930 applications. So dot music was one of them. Yeah. And once the window closed, I can revealed who applied for what. And we found out that dot music was applied for by eight companies, including my own. It included Google, Amazon, Donuts, Radix, MMX, GRS, another company called Far Further that was a community initiative for the, I would say, for better words, the traditional music industry, which was the RIAA, IFPI, and MPA, et cetera, et cetera. And my company applied as well as a community with mostly independents, in other words, a high volume of music community members. And we had tremendous support. We had like Reverb Nation, CD Baby. I mean, we, we had probably most of the digital music space on board that also represented major label artists as well because we have the, the overlapping issue and because there's so many intermediaries in music that one artist could be represented by or within different intermediaries. For example, in digital distribution, in groups, for example, would represent some major artist and so forth. So what happened was a community application is different from a open corporate application in the sense that according to the applicant guidebook that ICANN released, you would get priority if you met certain criteria for community. Right. So there were two community applicants. It was my initiative and there was the other initiative. And what happened in short was the other initiative didn't meet the criteria and all the supporting organizations from that initiative also joined my initiative, which was amazing, obviously. Yeah. So that was the battle since 2012. You know, a lot had happened throughout those years. And finally, finally, <laughs> recently, we, we prevailed, which is quite amazing because no one really believed we could, we could do it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that, that truly is amazing. Yeah, I, I, we, we shared a bit of uh, the information on, on 18 2014 after um, an interview with Robert Singerman about just that and his company jo kind of joining right, right. the, the, uh, the efforts with, with you. And by the way, it's clearly to anyone listening to us, you can find links to all the articles and the websites we are mentioning here in the show notes as usual. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I think it's uh, it's important to uh, to to mention something that most of our musicians, artists uh, in in our community listening to us right now, they are very familiar with the issue. But uh, it, it's worth mentioning that the website uh, artists uh, at a space is quite a mess because you you, you it's it's not really obvious with dot com, uh, which uh, what's what the main name is owned by. A particular artist because maybe it's just such a common name that it's already been taken by a company so uh, all the big artists may have these weird domain addresses and domain names on in the dot com area and here the idea is that uh, everything is, is going to be very straightforward if it's uh, and uh, if there is an artist name then it's going to be the artist name dot music from what I know at least so uh, could it could you tell us a bit about how it's going to look like uh, for musicians. And I know that there is a pre-registration form available on your website, uh, but yeah, so how, in, I mean, I know that there is a lot that goes into it, but how the next steps uh, will look like. Yeah, so you're exactly right concerning the names. Uh, and that was the, the issue that we looked at when I started this initiative so long ago, was that all these big artists, for example, let's say Queen, 
didn't own Queen.com. You know, even back then, Prince didn't own Prince.com. Even Justin Bieber doesn't own Justin Bieber. Dot com. It's his website is Justin Bieber music dot com. So the idea was to create a clean slate. So if you think of an artist name, you can just directly input it, directly navigate to it by putting it in the browser. So let's say you're looking for for Queen, it's Queen dot music. If you're looking for Prince, Prince dot music. So the the idea was to create a clean slate because the power of the search engines is is a bit high so i would ask you what's the official website of a particular artist and you would tell me i don't know i would have to search in google or bing and then figure out whether it is an official website or it's a fan website or it's a pirated website you you you'd never know you'd never know and that was the 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 issue that we were trying to solve so the idea behind dot music is firstly to have a clean slate and then introduce certain policies let's take for example dot edu in order for you to register a dot edu the requirements are you have to be a united states post secondary educational institution that's accredited yeah so in other words someone from sweden cannot register a dot edu you know educational institution even if they're in an educational institution so same with .gov it's US government and basically the these requirements for gov and edu and other extensions as well i mean even for country codes you know, let's say .nl for netherlands or 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 whatnot you have to be related to that community in in the netherlands someone yeah. from australia probably you know you would have to have some sort of nexus with that community and country codes are communities unless it's like an open country code where it's open to, you know like a generic like dot tv but you know like dot fr and for france and some other ones obviously are for for those corresponding communities so taking that model uh wouldn't it be neat if we would create a a a music address under dot music include verification that it's the actual person the actual brand the actual company the actual artist the actual band and then verify they make sure that 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 it's the legitimate entity that owns it and then make sure that no impersonator can take it and no cyber squad can ca- take it and also introduce content and use policies to dot music whereas only legal content related to music and usage exists so that has not been done before and i thought that would be quite a complementer to the global music community and industry so that's a little bit of the background when it comes to why we we, we think that the policies are important and also we wanted to add uh, built in security https to prevent abuse and also it helps the this enhanced security and verification and trust that a dot music will have will increase your search engine ranking so that's another thing that we looked at is is how do you get official music websites ranked higher in the search results and you know google is 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 pretty you know they they're pretty transparent on how you can achieve this i mean the site that that gets a higher ranking obviously has compelling content you know it's eat expertise you know it's expertise is this website the expert in this field in other words if it's an official website if it's an expert in that field the authority you know is this the authority website for this particular artist yes and the third one is trust you know is this trusted yeah it's verified it's licensed it's it represents the artist or the company or the industry professional that has that dot music address so this we and we looked at also the success of dot app that google launched recently and what google did that we thought was very innovative was introduce built in security so in other words in order for you to register and use the dot app it has https incorporated built in security that prevents abuse and Google actually 
increases the ranking of, of those particular sites because of this enhanced security. And we thought this was a great idea. And of course, we believe dot music should be safe, secure, trusted, and verified. So that would be a key component to not only help with the artists and the bands and the industry professionals and the companies related to music get higher search results, also to reduce any potential of abuse and furthermore, increase conversions. So if, if, if you get traffic from the search results or whatnot, even direct navigation or from their social media, then the, the visitor would feel comfortable engaging with a, a trusted, safe, secure, and verified dot music address. So it's everything mm. collectively that, that contributes to the value added. Yeah. So in terms of the pre-registration, we do have pre-registration on our website, which is www.music.us, which will change, by the way, in a few months when ICANN puts the .music in the internet route. So currently the website's www.music.us. You can actually pre-register your name there. It doesn't guarantee that you will get your name. However, it does enable you to be the first to be communicated concerning the launch and uh, the date and any news concerning dot music. So in terms of the launch, I think it's important to, to describe the launch process so everyone knows how this will work. Yeah. We haven't fine-tuned the details yet, but we're expecting the launch to be in 2020, and there's going to be three uh, phases, and they're all time-based phases. The first one is called the Sunrise Period, which enables trademark holders to register their names. So, for example, Universal Music has Universal as a trademark, and they can register Universal Dot Music. So, this protects all the big brands. Furthermore, uh, we have a that's a, related to it a globally protected music marks list, and this protects the names of famous music brands and artists because some of them may not have trademarks. And also, some of them may be filing for trademarks, and they have to wait a year or so. And, and also, filing for trademarks costs, costs money. So we wanted to reduce the costs for, for the entire global music community. So yes, Elvis Presley dot music will get, you know, will be represented by Elvis Presley's estate or, or whoever's involved who has leg the legitimate interest in, 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 that, in that name. So what we didn't want to do, which is really, really risky, is not incorporate these kinds of protections for big bands or, or even musicians within the band. You know? So for example, Paul McCartney dot music and, and Beatles dot music, and if it's e even a, a smaller artist, at least the musicians as well would be able to register, the musicians within a band could register their, their band name as well. So right after, um, so basically with this globally protected marks list, if someone tries to register a popular name, let's say Adele Dot Music, prior to Adele registering it, then they would get a notice which says, this is part of the globally protected marks list. Are you the authorized representative or are you this specific person that has the rights to this name within the music category. And if you're not and you do, you're going to spend money and then you're going to lose that money because the registry will take it back and give it to the authorized, the, the actual artist. So we, we, we have policies to remove any impersonation and any cyber squatting from registration. So uh, the next phase is called the music community member organization stage. It's called the MCMO stage. And this is a, again, there's a, a period of time, it may be six months, we're not sure what, what the duration would be, uh, which basically enables members of certain organizations or, or communities. So let's say the Grammys or ASCAP or uh, Reverb Nation or, 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 or CD Baby or TuneCore or any other sort of community to be able to register their domains before it goes to general availability. So obviously the next stage is, is general availability, which is first come, first serve. 
So you can go to GoDaddy or, or, or any other registrar and you can register your name. And that's first come, first serve. So that's the, the background on how we're intending on launching, on launching DAW Music. Yeah, it's a very reasonable approach, and you're navigating a really complicated space here. I, I, I can only imagine how many interesting situations there there may be in the future. Uh, like we see things like uh, artists under the same name appearing on the same Spotify profiles, while while these are you know different acts uh, uh, just using the same name, no trademarks, like these kind of situations, and there may be quite quite a few. Tricky there's there's moments. many there's many of them there's even on Spotify if you search for the band Bliss B L I S S there's five of them on Spotify yeah. the band Rain there's so many of them and also there's some issues that are could be a bit rare like who gets Elvis dot music is yeah, it Elvis exactly. Presley yeah. or Elvis Costello yeah. right yeah. who yeah. gets Michael dot music is it Michael Jackson. <laughs> Or is it George Michael or any other person? Or, or, that... or no one, just so there are no yeah. conflicts. Yeah. yeah. So can you give us an example of the of this verification process for all the smaller developing artists out there? How exactly they will be able to prove that they have the name even if they don't have, like it's, it's their artist name, even if they don't have a trademark for the name? Right, right, right. And by the way, we're expecting 99.99% of registrations not to have a trademark. Yeah. You know, so, so that's obviously the way that dot music is built is to cater for those that don't have a trademark because only a few have a trademark. Right. So the, the way that the, that the registration process works is you go to the, to the retailer that you want to buy the dot music from and you put in your name. And then you get a email that asks you to verify that certain registration policies are agreed upon. And basically, uh, you get a membership token as well. So in other words, you have to agree to two things that relate to dot music. First of all, is, is the registration policies where you know, we have a list of things that you can do. And obviously, there's a few things that you cannot do, which is put in other people's copyright and impersonate other people, uh, you know, piracy and all that other stuff. And the second thing is, is you have to agree that, that you're a member of the global music community. So you get this verification email, you verify, and then you agree that, hey, this is me, this is my name, this is my address, I agree to the policies, I'm part of the global music community. And there's a bunch of things that you agree to that are obviously catered to the global music community at hand. And then you receive this global music community membership token. And that will enable you to, to do certain things within the dot music global music community. And the, uh, the next step after that is to get a verification, additional verification, which would be done through an API with uh, a verification company. So it usually takes about 60 seconds to get verified. It could be through like uh, taking a photo of your, of your ID yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or something really simple. It's, it's, there's companies out there yeah. that do it and it, it takes 60 seconds to, to go through the process. And, and you know, b- bottom line is we, we want to know that it's you and More importantly, your fans want to know that it's you and people visiting your website want want to know that it's you. And, you know, this process uh, has to be conducted in a way that it scales. So we we can't do uh, manual verifications because globally, as you may know, it's every country has its own ID system. There's no you know, there's no ability to manually do that and it's not scalable. Yeah, totally. So we'll be working with, with third parties that uh, work with this sort of uh, ID verification. Yeah. And collectively, uh, the goal is to make dot music a legal safe haven. So look, if everyone agrees to the terms and conditions that benefit the music community and also go through this little process to get verified, it benefits you. So, you know, and we saw the 
the benefits of, of verification and also the demand for it through you know social communities like Twitter and Instagram where where people trust uh, that it's the celebrity or the actual company when they get this tick that says yeah it's verified you know so the interesting thing is people want to get verified <laughs> that's what's interesting you know and there's a whole business out there for for uh, verifying Twitter accounts or verifying Instagram accounts, et cetera, et cetera. A, it makes you look legitimate, and B, you know, it lets other people know that it's that it's you and and you're serious about what you're doing. Yeah. You know, you went through this additional step. Yeah. So if if you're an amateur artist or, or whatnot that really, you know, you're not really serious about music or anything like that, the likelihood is you won't. Why would you want to adopt music? You know, so because um, yeah. no. we always get that, that that question on price, for example, because that's that's always a big issue. And, and, and you know, you get your dot com for 10 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever it is. And then, you know, with dot music will be a bit more expensive, maybe 30, 40, 50. We don't know. Oh, so it's not decided um, yet. No. And the, the other thing is with the pricing, we determine the wholesale price that's given to all the all the registrars and retailers and resellers. And it's up to them to determine the retail price. So let's say if we determine the, the wholesale price is $30 or $20, GoDaddy, for example, could still sell it for $50, $60, $70, or $80. And some, you know, some retailers, sometimes they bundle things. So they may say, with one year's worth of hosting, you get your DOM music for free. You know, I mean, there's a whole bunch of models. And you know, the final price will be determined by by the retailers. What, yeah. what we do is, is provide the wholesale price. So what happens is when someone registers a domain through a registrar, let's say network solutions, then if we incorporate a 30 or $40 wholesale price, then when the registration is made, network solutions has to pay us the 30, $40. And then uh, whatever they want to mark it up or, or bundle it, it's, it's their responsibility. However, we, we had uh, long conversations about pricing, and we had the luxury. So the, the, the luxury of, of us launching Dot Music being one of the ones, the new top-level domains that are launching last, was we could see how the, the rest of the top-level domains have launched, and we could look at best practices. And what we saw was that price is very, very connected to abuse mm -hmm. so it's it's so basically lower price domains right i don't want to you know say any names but those prices the, those domains that are under ten dollars or five dollars have the highest likelihood of abuse uh, yeah. because abusers it's a financial risk they want to get a cheap domain to do what they want to do with dot music if the price is a bit higher you won't get these types of bad actors in the ecosystem. Yeah, plus yeah. the registration problems. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. And I, I've, I've seen this kind of abuse quite a bit. Makes perfect sense. And it's great that you're being transparent about the wholesale price just to give an idea to the members uh, to, to understand if they are paying a fair price with the retailer or not. So it's, it's, it's a whole like different big topic, but it's, it's, it's great that you communicate about that. I think it's a big important part of uh, of your philosophy and just approach to running this company in the first place uh, well, one question to you about the website or not even the question but just to to make it clear also to to those interested in the process so once you get the domain name it's up it's still up on the artist to uh well launch the actual website build it with whatever same as platform they prefer uh, and it will be completely up to them. And it will, by the way, have a huge impact on uh, the search engine rankings and things like that. It's not just the domain, but the actual website optimization. But there will be some policies in place. Uh, so you, you, you still have to follow some rules on your website. Like it has to be actually about uh, the music act. The domain is That's for... That's exactly it. it. Yeah. That, that exactly is correct. So what, what, we want, we, what we want to prevent is someone registering a dog music and posting a website about dogs and cats, for example, you know, or global warming or something that's unrelated to, to music. 
Um, and also the other thing that we wanted to do is, is to uh, make sure that dot music domains are being used, used in the right manner, and that there's actual content on them. So we do have content and use policies. So if you're going to get a dot music, you know, we want you to use it because, um, A, it benefits you. And secondly, it, it helps every, the network of dot music. So, so we see dot music as an entire uh, uh, network effect of benefits. So uh, we have, you know, our, our, the supporting organizations that, that are behind dot music, they represent members that consist of 95% of global music consumed. So we have a huge responsibility to ensure that the entire network of dot music domains is, you know, could be as as, as compelling to visitors as possible. Yeah. So so if you if you go to a dot music and it has unrelated content, what does that got to do with music? It's it lowers the quality. So we want higher quality content, and we and we don't want squatters or or people that are are big into flipping domains to go in there and treat dot music as a domain investment in other yeah. words it, it's not for domainers it's for the music community so that you know every single component that we added whether it's policy whether it's content in use which is part of policy whether it's verification whether it's the globally protected music marks list whether it's the way that we launch it whether it's the built-in security and it really boils down to the collective music community and the benefits. So collectively, all these components working together will create a huge benefit for everyone. And wouldn't it be great if, if Google or Bing said, holy crap, you know, dot music domains are trusted, they're verified, they have compelling content, let's treat them like Wikipedia, let's put them up there. Let's drop the, you know, we, we don't, let's drop the other sites down and, and, and have it replaced. And of course, one of the biggest FAQ questions that we get is, I have a .com, why would I register a .music? You know, that's always the, the response and, and the, the question. And the responses that we have is, we know that with all these benefits that we put together, that you will extract a lot of value by having a .music. Why not have two websites in the top 10 of the search results? Why not leverage all these benefits for .music to get even more traffic. Of course, you'd have to come up with a, a primary or a secondary strategy on how both your .com website and your .music website will work together. But again, what we don't want someone to do is A, redirect their .com to .music or .music to .com because you're preventing more traffic going to, your, to a place where that you control. Okay. So for example, you know, it's 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 a collective strategy for the global music community that we believe would be more worthwhile than just redirection. That's interesting. I uh, will be honest with you. I thought about the redirection, <laughs> so uh, I, it, I, it 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 felt like the uh, natural, easy solution to that. But I completely hear you on that point. It gets more and more complicated the more I kind of I'm I'm, I'm listening to you and. Think about like the kinds of challenges you are facing right now. It's exciting for you. you've been fighting for it for so many years, and now it's just uh, the beginning of the actual process of getting the domain out in the world. It's definitely going to be right. interesting. I, I have a number of like three or five hundred questions which I won't ask you right now. We, I think we can just wrap it up and uh, leave our listeners interested in learning more and uh, well, clearly registering pre-registering for the domain for those performing recording as artists bands and so on and uh yeah i i understand that uh you won't have answers to all the questions out there right right now as you still uh work on the whole process so uh yeah we are linking to everything in the show notes really looking forward to reading the news and uh, updates and just seeing how it's implemented. The potential is massive there. Uh, we're definitely going to use it for all of our clients, artists. Uh, yeah, let, please let me know if there is uh, any additional call to action or recommendation to uh, musicians listening to us right now and music professionals as well. Yeah, so, so just to do a little recap and some additional information that would be useful. 
If you are interested in adult music, obviously go to www.music.us and pre-register. There's also another component for the, I'm sure some organizations that have music members are going to be asking, so how can I belong to this MCMO priority stage to offer my music members the ability to register adult music through my organization? If you visit www.music.us on the top, it says there's an application for such organizations to, to become a dot music MCMO, a music, res- dot music reseller. So that may be useful for, uh, for those that did not get into the, the MCMO process before. You can get into it now. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's an, applica- it's an application process. So we have to look and see that you're, you meet certain criteria to be an MCMO. And secondly, uh, with respect to content, let's say you do have a .com and you get a .music. What we want to build is maybe like placeholder pages that has some content that would be easily, you know, if, if you don't have the time to create a new website, we can put together some sort of placeholder website that includes content. Let's say uh, the best example would be like a LinkedIn page, but would be relative to .music. That way... Yeah. It helps on both sides on having something out there while you're building your dot music website and developing your your strategy. If you do have a dot com, of course, we, we can't tell you what to do. And you know, dot music. You know, I'm sure a whole bunch of creative stuff is going to come out of this, and we're excited to see how it you know it gets it gets transformed and 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 see all the innovation that will that will happen. Yeah, very cool. It's uh, it's exciting. Just that it's happening with music, like it's happening. It's a unique case, so it it hasn't happened to any top level domain before. The kind of work you are doing here and the fact that it's for the music industry is uh, is amazing. So congratulations once again, and uh, thank you for all the details. I hope that uh, in, it's clear uh, in general to a, a, anyone li- who listened to uh, to to this conversation, to everything that you got to share, and. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I definitely recommend reading all the materials that you have on the website for additional details. So- yes, and, and I would ask anyone that, mm-hmm. uh, because this is a, com- a community-based dot music, if anyone has any feedback or any recommendations on dot music uh, pertaining to launch or policies or any you know recommendations on 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 what would be great to see in adult music they, you can email, email us on on the website and this is important to us i don't know if, if you know or your listeners know that the dot music is governed there's a governance structure and it's a it's a multi, multi-stakeholder model of equal rep- representation so basically it's governed by the global music community so on the governance board we have you know the major labels the indies the publishers the artists you know even music education, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, dot music is governed by the music community. And if anyone has any suggestions, this is, you know, this is for the music community and, and, and we'd love to know any comments. And using that information will hopefully launch something that everyone would want. That's awesome. Yeah, very important information. I'm glad that you mentioned that to make it clear. Yeah, that's great and really appreciate it. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, great. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on the project. Thank you a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you a lot for listening. Don't forget to go to the show notes at datedmusic.com. Dated music this time. And uh, yeah, so episode number 130, you will find the show notes with the description and the links right there. And you can just go to music.us for the free registration form and if you're listening to these episodes in the future when the registration is publicly available then clearly you know you know what to do and hopefully um the, the this show still gave you some useful uh insights and background as you can see at this time there is uh, a bunch of questions that are not answered yet a lot of challenges really interesting challenges in my opinion and i cannot wait to see how exactly this project will be implemented uh th- there is going to be a number of interesting case studies i'm sure uh some issues i'm pretty confident as well but I'm, I'm quite positive about the future of the .music domain name. 
Once again, congrats to Konstantin Rousseau and, uh, and everyone involved in the project in the past uh, decades. And uh, yeah, if you have, if you guys listening to me right now have any feedback, questions, uh, please uh, leave a comment on Instagram, SoundCloud, Twitter, whatever you prefer. And overall, if you have uh, any feedback, especially positive feedback, please consider leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, so even if you listen to this show on Spotify, Stitcher, whatever you prefer, uh, a review on Apple Podcasts is really appreciated uh, because it will help other musicians and industry professionals to discover uh, Music Growth Talks. Podcasts are on the rise right now. Many people launch new podcasts. This is amazing. And more people listen to podcasts. This is really great. And, uh, you know, if you appreciate what I do here, uh, it will be great if you help me uh, be in front of all these new potential <laughs> listeners. So thank you so much for that. And till the next episodes of Music Growth Talks. You've been listening to Music Growth Talks with Andrew Apanov. Find more episodes and subscribe at musicgrowthtalks.com.